the elite MARSOC, the Marine Corps' answer to the U.S. Special Operations Command. These are the warriors trained for the most perilous missions in the world's darkest corners, but even the best laid plans can go awry. March 4, 2007, dawn breaks in the Nangarhar province of Afghanistan. A team of Marines embarks on a three-phase mission, navigating through the snowy terrains of Tora Bora Mountains. Their journey takes them to a border crossing, a brief interaction with an army unit, and then back to their quest for a suitable reconnaissance point. But as they retrace their steps to Badi Khat, the atmosphere shifts, the once lively streets eerily silent, with only men of a certain age in sight. Out of the blue, chaos erupts, a rogue vehicle crashes into the convoy, setting the sky ablaze with an explosion. In mere moments, the Marines find themselves in a deadly ambush. Bullets fly, cars charge, and amidst the mayhem, a Marine turret gunner, even while aflame, retaliates with unmatched valor. The battle intensifies, with adversaries emerging from every corner. As the Marines strategize their escape, a mob forms a human barricade, challenging their exit. A single warning shot disperses the crowd, paving the way for the Marines' return to safety. But as they regroup, a sinister narrative begins to weave in the shadows. Whispers in the village speak of a Marsoc team gone rogue, of fabricated ambushes, and of a thirst for innocent blood. The allegations are grave. A team of elite Marines, intoxicated and unhinged, rampaging through the village, inventing an ambush as an excuse to unleash violence on civilians. But let's delve deeper. MARSOC, or the Marine Special Operations Command, is an elite unit known for its rigorous training and strict code of conduct. These Marines are trained not just in combat, but also in cultural sensitivity and diplomacy, especially when operating in foreign lands. The idea of such a team going rogue contradicts their very ethos. Fred Galvin, the platoon commander, and his men were not just battling insurgents on that fateful day. They were fighting for their reputation and honor. The allegations weighed heavily on them, casting a shadow over their bravery and dedication. The truth, however, is often elusive. In the heat of battle, perceptions can be skewed. The villagers, traumatized by the sudden violence, might have misinterpreted the Marines' defensive actions. On the other hand, the Marines, trained to respond swiftly to threats, might have perceived the villagers' actions as hostile. The incident in Nangarhar became a focal point of discussions about the rules of engagement, the challenges of counterinsurgency operations, and the fine line between self-defense and excessive force. It raised questions about the relationship between foreign troops and local populations, and the complexities of operating in a war-torn region with deeply rooted cultural and historical contexts. In the end, the story of Marsoc Fox Company serves as a poignant reminder of the complexities of modern warfare. It underscores the importance of understanding, communication, and trust, not just among troops, but between troops and the communities they seek to protect. The aftermath of the incident was a whirlwind of accusations and investigations. Some locals claimed the Marines had left their vehicles, intimidating local journalists, capturing the scene's aftermath. Rumors spread of the Marines' alleged intoxication. Colonel John Nicholson, the Army commander in the area, expressed regret, stating that the actions of the Marine Raiders tarnished the sacrifices of countless Americans in Afghanistan. The U.S. government, in a gesture of goodwill, compensated the survivors and families of the alleged victims though the exact number of casualties remained ambiguous. Major General Frank Kearney, the head of the U.S. Special Operations Command Central, made a startling claim to the Washington Post. The Marines had allegedly caused the deaths of at least 15 individuals and injured 50 more. Kearney further asserted that there was no evidence suggesting the platoon had faced any gunfire post the initial explosion. The weight of these allegations was immense. Marsoc Fox Company was promptly ordered to leave the war zone, their reputation tarnished. Commander Fred Galvin, the man at the helm, was stripped of his command, but the storm was far from over. In January 2008, the Marine Corps initiated a court of inquiry to ascertain if there was substantial evidence to press criminal charges. The proceedings, which spanned three weeks, were grueling for the seven Marines at the center of the controversy. The military, 
in an attempt to maintain secrecy, restricted media access, and a significant portion of the testimonies were conducted privately to safeguard classified information. The Marines recounted facing deceptive tactics, coercion, and even threats of deportation from their own military brethren. The ripple effects of the military's investigation were vast. Kearney, who had played a pivotal role in the initial allegations, faced scrutiny himself. Accusations of misconduct led to an investigation by the Defense Department Inspector General. The focus was not just on his handling of the Fox Company case, but also another incident involving the Army's elite Green Berets. In the end, the story of Marsoc Fox Company serves as a poignant reminder of the complexities of modern warfare. It underscores the importance of understanding, communication, and trust, not just among troops, but between troops and the communities they seek to protect. The aftermath of the incident was a whirlwind of accusations and investigations. Some locals claimed the Marines had left their vehicles, intimidating local journalists, capturing the scene's aftermath. Rumors spread of the Marines' alleged intoxication. Colonel John Nicholson, the Army commander in the area, expressed regret, stating that the actions of the Marine Raiders tarnished the sacrifices of countless Americans in Afghanistan. The U.S. government, in a gesture of goodwill, compensated the survivors and families of the alleged victims, though the exact number of casualties remained ambiguous. Major General Frank Kearney, the head of the U.S. Special Operations Command Central, made a startling claim to the Washington Post. The Marines had allegedly caused the deaths of at least 15 individuals and injured 50 more. Kearney further asserted that there was no evidence suggesting the platoon had faced any gunfire post the initial explosion. The weight of these allegations was immense. Marsoc Fox Company was promptly ordered to leave the war zone, their reputation tarnished. Commander Fred Galvin, the man at the helm, was stripped of his command, but the storm was far from over. In January 2008, the Marine Corps initiated a court of inquiry to ascertain if there was substantial evidence to press criminal charges. The proceedings, which spanned three weeks, were grueling for the seven Marines at the center of the controversy. The military, in an attempt to maintain secrecy, restricted media access, and a significant portion of the testimonies were conducted privately to safeguard classified information. The Marines recounted facing deceptive tactics, coercion, and even threats of deportation from their own military brethren. The ripple effects of the military's investigation were vast. Kearney, who had played a pivotal role in the initial allegations, faced scrutiny himself. Accusations of misconduct led to an investigation by the Defense Department Inspector General. The focus was not just on his handling of the Fox Company case, but also another incident involving the Army's elite Green Berets, then a glimmer of hope. On Memorial Day weekend, a statement was released. The Marines had acted appropriately, but the shadow of the allegations lingered. Major news outlets continued to report the alleged civilian killings by Fox Company. The Marines, even those still enlisted, felt the weight of the world's judgment. Some expressed that they'd rather face enemy bullets than the relentless interrogations and accusations. Fred Galvin, the once stripped commander, embarked on a mission for justice. He sought transparency, wanting the world to recognize that the conflict in Body Cot was a clean shoot. He emphasized that his Marines had acted with precision, control, and justified force. Yet the specter of the alleged war crimes haunted Fox Company for over a decade. Despite a review by a Navy Records Board in 2018 somewhat clearing their name, an official apology remained elusive. 